I come from a country, Sri Lanka, where huge atrocities were committed, people suffered, people were slaughtered in the tens of thousands, and nobody cared. There was no debate at the UN Security Council. It never even made it onto the agenda. So I think we have to recognize that even though this crisis is distinct, it bears the hallmarks of many, many other trends that have been playing out across the world. The global response has been different, firstly, just because the world has been paying attention from day one. Uh, usually when situations happen, you know, in Sub-Saharan Africa or in East Asia, Latin America, you really struggle to get the US, the EU, to put this you know, on the table at the Security Council. Here, you have a situation where one of the five permanent members of the Council is involved, and we've still seen action happen. It hasn't just been blocked. There hasn't been a backroom deal to make this all go away. So we have seen that attention, and we've also seen unprecedented unity in terms of the response. The UN definitely needs to change. I think you know, there's been a lot of talk about how can Russia be a permanent member of the Security Council and violate all the principles on which the UN stands. It's supposed to defend these principles. It's supposed to be one of the states that has the primary responsibility for international peace and security. And at the moment, it's probably one of the biggest threats. I think we need to see action move away from the Security Council which you know, has proven time and again that it really isn't a legitimate or practical forum when it comes not just to Ukraine, but any situation involving China, any situation involving the United States. So we need to look at bodies such as the General Assembly where every single country in the world has a vote and can make its case. And we need to strengthen those kinds of parts of the UN. We also need to strengthen the UN's ability to deliver humanitarian aid and to stand up for human rights and to ensure that there's accountability and justice uh, when we see these huge violations of international law. Our policies on refugees have been racist, I think, since the beginning of the UN. It's been really heartwarming to see the response we've seen to Ukrainian refugees, but it did really stick in my throat when I heard uh, you know, Poland explaining its own policy by saying, well, these are the right kind of refugees. There's only one right kind of refugee, and that is a safe refugee. And I think often we measure our, 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 the, the size of our solidarity in relation to how similar the refugees look to us. I think going forward, we need to ensure that everyone who's fleeing Ukraine is given the same opportunities to rebuild their lives, to be resettled, to be relocated. We have to make sure that we aren't sending people back uh, to countries where there might be, you know, they might be persecuted. But we also need to change our approach uh, to refugees uh, more generally. We've seen that we can act with compassion. We can change the rules very, very quickly when we want to. We need to now look at how we can do that in a more sustainable way.